Welcome to PDMA Corporation, home of the MC Emacs. I'd like to thank you for joining us as we continue along in our presentation series. Once again, we have Noah Bethel, the Vice President of Product Development. Hello from sunny Tampa, Florida. And I might add cold today, right? A little chilly down there. A little chilly. Uh, Noah, we have another case study, and I know we did a bunch of case studies last year focusing on quality assurance, but here it is. Here's another one. It's such a key issue, and you know, get the motor started right, and you expect a longer life expectancy. Yeah, this is the starting point is where it, where it really matters the most. So here's the situation. Uh, do, does it always happen on a Saturday? Always. It's like motors have a calendar, and they know when to fail. So the dreaded Saturday phone call, you have a problem here. The coal conveyor belt. It's which, which is on a wound rotor motor flashed on the low voltage slip rings. Motor could not be repaired and needed to be replaced. No problem. We just got a motor back from the repair facility. It's always good to have a spare. You ask yourself, how's our quality control on our spare motors? Well, here's our big problem. They recently repaired the spare motor. It was in the warehouse. They pulled it out. And on startup, it trips. So now they're probably worried about, okay, was the previous motor problem causing the motor was this problem or is it the motor that's causing the problem? Yeah, so we were blowing fuses. Now they tried it six times, so they blew about six fuses at $1,000 per fuse. I'm not sure if that's good procedure. The special crane needed for replacement, we know that when the cranes are involved, there's some money. Can't imagine the cost. Uh, and uh, naturally, from a process standpoint, if it's not working, you're not putting coal on the conveyor belt. You're not being able to meet the demands. So, this is a wound rotor motor. Explain a little bit about a wound rotor motor. So, the uniqueness of a wound rotor motor is you got windings on the stator and windings on the rotor. It's like a rotating transformer. Differently than on a standard induction, you've got like uh, the squirrel cage, which is more of a, an iron and, a, and an aluminum combination or a copper combination. So, this windings on the rotor are controlled through resistors to, to minimize current on startup and control the torque through the startup. So, the resistor bank is on startup. So, they this is what they had on site and this is what they could do they could s take a mega out there well guess what resistance to ground was fine nothing had had gone to ground resistance testing of the resistor bank also passed so there's no high resistance connection there you can't get voltage and current because it trips on startup you and i both come from a military background and what were we always asked to do save the world with a multimeter and a megometer absolutely and those two are good tools but not necessarily the ones that are going to solve the problem in every situation. Right. So they didn't have our technology on site at the time of failure, but they were going to be bringing it the next day. So Noah, can you explain a little bit about an induction motor and uh, the Y wound motor that we have here? Right. So there's two major configurations. You have the Y and a delta. In this situation with this wound rotor motor, it was wound in a Y configuration, which means you've got the one, two, three on the outside where they connect power to it. And then inside the motor, they connect 4, 5, and 6 in the Y configuration. So 4, 5, and 6 is not visible to you, but 1, 2, and 3 is where you would tap off of. Correct. Yeah, the 4, 5, and 6 often put together by the shop and, and concealed within the frame of the motor. Now, Noah, maybe you can explain to us what if, instead of uh, labeling the 5, 5, that it was accidentally labeled as 2. So instead of 4, 5, 6, it was it was tied together four two six this would be a huge and often very time expensive mistake you know when you're rewinding everything and reconnecting everything a lot of times the the if the, they're not labels available they clean those off during the rewind or refurbishment and the the you know the technician at the shop has to to test to determine which side is the correct one if he connects two instead of five he has inverted that phase and that's a big deal. So some serious bucking occurring in the circuit at in the a moment. In big way. So they bring the MC Max and they do what we call rotor influence check. And we're just going to check inductance here. Remember, we already checked resistance to ground and we already checked the resistive resistance of the, uh, the uh, resistor bank. Now this is inductance. Tell us. Right. So the RIC test, it is the classic first thing to do in a, in a troubleshooting when you're not sure about an inductive imbalance. And in this situation, they're probably looking at the rotor. And, and, they're, and they're not wrong for that except for, and you look at this situation, the rotor's not deviating it very much when they rotate it, but the inductance of the stator windings is hugely separated, which goes right in line with the example you showed earlier. And so when we want to look at it from a different viewpoint, say the polar uh, plot here, it's just showing the same thing, just in a different viewpoint. Right. We got the two phases that are around that one inverted phase that are both dropped in inductance. And it's like applying a big electric brake to this thing when you start it. Hence why on startup, it would just trip. 
absolutely heights like a lock rotor current startup. It's going to eventually on time delay just trim on over current. And like you were mentioning a little bit earlier before we started the presentation, thank goodness for the $1,000 fuses because it probably prevented the motor from failing. Exactly. Now, this is the actual motor after we fixed the two and the five. So we swapped them back to where they were supposed to be and tied it together. And now you can see inductance is relatively equal. These are You're kind of looking at three straight lines here. Exactly. Even though there's a little bit of erratic resolution steps, these things are on top of each other compared to the last one. So now we balance the inductance of the three phases, and this is more what you'd expect. So as I mentioned earlier, you know, we've done a lot of quality assurance, but boy, it's very important to know the status of your warehouse motors and motors that are just coming on site so that you have a good, clean, healthy start to your uh, electric motor reliability program. As always, we want to thank you for your time and thank you for the information that you've given to us. And if you want to share any, please don't hesitate to contact us at the website or give us a phone call. We'd be more than happy to hear from you. Until then, you stay safe and you have a great day.